Welcome back Halo followers, this is Ron here on Halo Follower, and today we're going to be talking a lot about E3 2019 again, about Halo Infinite's future, about the campaign trailer that we may see in less than two weeks from now, as well as the flood, a bunch of y'all's comments about E3 2019, and really just a lot of off the handle kind of stuff, more personal commentary, not really a script to follow. I just want to have a dialogue with you guys, kind of, you know, get down to um, base of everything that's happening, and also there is a mind-blowing Halo mod that I want to talk about briefly as well as a one hour long Halo parody movie that I am motion capturing and animating that will release later this year. So without further ado if you're here for E3 2019 talk we're going to be talking a lot about that. E3 2019 again will happen on June 9th 2019 Sunday at 1 p.m pacific time 2 p.m mountain time 3 p.m central time or 4 p.m eastern time or if you live in Europe 8 p.m GMT so it's kind of late in the day for you if you live in Europe, uh, kind of sucks. Hopefully you don't have work or school. Of course, you can just come back here on Halo Follower and I'll be covering everything I could possibly cover on there. So yeah, firstly, I just want to talk that Halo MCC is actually reported to not have its release before E3. So within the next two weeks, people still haven't had the public uh, uh, flighting on the Reach uh, betas or uh, versions or whatever you want to call it, flights, right? So that hasn't come out yet. Um, but in the meantime, there's actually this amazing Arma 3 mod for PC on the Steam Workplace. So if you do need to buy Arma 3 to use this mod, but it, it, it's essentially just like this humongous mod that's um, essentially Arma, right? Which is like this um, very large, uh, open, uh, kind of uh, war simulating game. You know, I'm not too much into it, but um, I might check it out because, I mean, this just looks absolutely amazing. It looks like a massive multiplayer Halo game that we just never really got and here we have it right and now this has been out for a while I think about six months I think it came out last December but this is just really cool to look at and I'll leave a link down in the description so if you do have Arma 3 you can check it out I think it's certainly worth looking up uh, doing research on before you buy Arma 3 to play it so if you don't like it you know you know ahead of time but anyways this is really really cool and I just wanted to quickly share it. And also, as I announced at the beginning of this year, I haven't really done a 500,000 or 600,000 subscriber thank you video or something big to say thank you to you guys, but I am producing a Halo Machinima nicknamed Project Eden, and it's about two friends that travel across the world to find a lost hero to save the world from annihilation. And really, the movie is made for you guys. It's made for the Halo community, and, it's, and it is my thank you for just all the help I've had through the past years. It's a common it has lots of action and it's created in Source Filmmaker and it's going to be an hour long and motion captured. It might have a sequel series or something, but we'll see. It's aiming for a release this November, so um, here's a few screenshots I haven't released so far. So yeah, I'm really excited to show more. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about E3, all right? So Spartan Jinx 1997 says, The rumor that I've heard that I'm most hyped about is the 500 million budget. God, I hope it is. I think, of course, it is. Um, by the way, we're going to be talking about things that we've already discussed a little bit, but you know, I'm just going to be giving my honest thoughts about it. I think that it's very likely, considering that Halo 5, I think, did pretty well, and that Halo's just a big, it's just a big potential for Microsoft to play their cards right. And plus, the game will be in development for five years. And the fact that we haven't got any news this year, I would say, is pretty much confirmation that the game is not going to be releasing this year. And that's kind of a bummer. I, I think most of you y'all might agree with me when I say that, you know, we've been so disappointed in the past that I kind of just want to wait for a really good game. Yeah, I mean, will they be doing the open world thing? Will they be taking the risk? I'm sure, yeah. It's going to be a 343 game. I mean, rewatching that trailer that we got last year in E3 2018, you know, you could see that 343 made it. There's something about their style and their engine that just seems a little bit different than Bungie's, but yeah, they're using the slip space engine, so I'm really excited to see how that actually affects the gameplay and if it essentially gives us more content to to play with yeah i'm just absolutely thrilled for that and you should be too moving on to josh rc he says i just imagine an amazing soundtrack playing in the background as you run by alien creatures grazing through the vast meadows so this is something really I, I wish i've talked more about in the last year but i think we're going to probably see a little bit more of it since that last thing was a teaser we can probably expect a little bit more fleshed out version of last year's teaser and that's probably going to involve some wildlife and alien creatures and really all we saw was some deer and this rhino thing kind of hard to say like what 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 
other wildlife out there uh, are we going to see in this this next trailer and, and in the gameplay as well? And and will it be dangerous too? Will there be dangerous animal packs that get offended if a Spartan steps on their patch of territory? Um, that's just going to be really, really fun to uh, just run into wildlife. I mean, you're you're just driving through the place and then your your warthog gets tossed over by a giant mammoth creature, you know? That's just going to be a lot of fun. And also, what about challenges to hunt down those wildebeest? That would be pretty cool, right? I don't think we're going to see any of that in this year's campaign trailer, but I really am excited to see some more of those monsters and how they might actually affect the gameplay and the RPG element or aspect of, of this game, if there is any, right? That's not confirmed, but it certainly seems that this is going to be a li a, a big live uh, open world environment that we can, you know. We have another comment here, Crispy Chicken 44 he says, if Marty returns, Marty O'Donnell, this coming to PC and the series truly does return to the roots, oh my god, Microsoft will be printing money. I, I, I didn't really <laughs> express my excitement with Marty returning. I guess I did. I said, I said that I would have a boner. But, <laughs> oh my god, if Marty returned, Halo is back. I mean, I, f I feel like 3 for 3 has always, they never really put their heart and soul into the music, I feel. I mean, then again, I'm just an outside observer, but it really never had that feeling of of love attached to it that I feel like the other games had. Now, some of Halo 5's soundtrack actually was really, really cool. If they had Marty O'Donnell do the soundtrack, the score for Halo Infinite, oh my god. And, and you know, apparently Marty, I, I, I think I have my facts straight here when I, I, I say that Marty did the Destiny soundtrack before uh, it was all erased and replaced with the new soundtrack right before he was fired, right? Or after he was fired. So the Destiny soundtrack is, um, I think, developed by someone else, actually. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I know that there's some pieces that Marty never released to the public that aren't out there that were apparently the best that he's ever made. So that is, oh God, you know, I just, I know Marty is so talented and, and to see him back in Halo would be mind-blowing. I mean, if nothing else about this game, Halo Infinite, feels like Halo, the music would really tie it together anyway. I mean, Halo 5 Guardians, as wonky and as jarring as it was, if the music was right, if it was better, then I feel like that would have really curved it like 20-30% to make it like more like Halo. Anyway, that's just my thoughts about that. But I guess uh, something text, TX something. Uh, for campaign, they say Halo 2 inspired story with four players, co-op and old school Marines with funny dialogue. And for multiplayer, Halo 3 style with playable elite. So these are things that he wants or she wants. And overall, bring back reach customization. So the cool thing about all that is that there is four players uh, split screen co-op that will be confirmed. And also um, playable elites have not been confirmed. However, I am kind of interested to see how three for three tackles that but really there's no reason to not allow playable elites and custom games because that's just our own thing and people have been begging for elites for such a long time it's kind of weird that they just only had them in a couple games and then took them out so i i think they should certainly bring them back and don't let them in squat as uh, swat i mean if, if, if i know they screw up swat but just don't let them in swat and then you're good right anyway they say overall bring back reach customization that's also confirmed dual wielding is not but um that actually that's a part of another comment that we'll get into later maybe unless i talk about it now but dual wielding is, is just it felt like such a badass thing to do and to have that again in halo infinite i think that would really be a callback to you know halo 2 and Halo 3 days when we could dual wield and that was just like a really cool feature I remember playing Halo 1 and then playing Halo 2 and just being so memorized by mixing up the crosshairs and uh, doing different combinations of weapons and everything I want to say it's absolutely needed but I mean it's just such a cool thing I feel like they should have dual wielding right at least in custom games again all these things should be available in custom games I don't know why 3 for 3 took them out or even Bungie with Reach but anyway still no pickle says no more shitty art style hey I'll do you one better, still no pickles. How about great art style <laughs> instead of no more shitty? I don't want subpar art style. I want them to really get into the um, the feeling of Halo. And, and I think they really captured the essence of it with the art that we saw in that trailer. And this shot here uh, at the very end of the trailer always kind of confused me because they didn't really show the halo ring gear and it was kind of kind of dull like the, the background was kind of like cloudy and i wonder why they did that and i wonder if there's something unique or interesting about this halo ring that they wanted to cover up for just the teaser so um i'm just really curious what they're going to do with the art style with the elites with the covenant with the flood will it match halo wars 2's art style uh, and how will characters faces change i wonder if they're going to be changing 
the characters' faces like they did in Halo Wars uh, 1 to the, the to the transition of 2. Because, I mean, for, for example, Professor Anders looks uh, pretty different, and the other characters look kind of different because the art style is just so different. And I wonder how that's going to affect the lighting and the narrative along with the pillars of heroism and hope and wonder and all those cool things. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Andrea, uh, I don't even know why I said the last name. Big team battle with more than 16 players, the return of invasion, and co-op with four players. Co-op is confirmed again, but big team battle should certainly at this point have more than 16 players. I know that there's Warzone, which has 24 players, 12 each 12. Let's step it up a notch. You know, it's not impossible. Battlefield's done it. Dice is done it so why not bring us into a, a large open uh battle I, I i feel like halo is worthy of that and having multiple um objectives would be really dynamic gameplay too for example if there was like this might be a bad example but if there was like um a slayer section a part of the scoreboard as well as a capture the flag um objective in the game as well and if there was maybe two flags to to defend then that would be cool that would spread out the gameplay so there's not just 20 people camping in, in one room with one flag that that would force the teams to mix up their strategy and stuff. And also a squad system. I think a squad system would be unique. And I think it would really help with uh, getting back into the action. That, you know, respawning, respawning and stuff. Like uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, for example. Or, you know, I think the Battlefield games have a squad system. But... Yeah, certainly that would be really cool. Great says, Chief and the Arbiter's reaction to the Flood returning. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, that would be... Uh, Quite fun to see the Arbiter reacting to the Flood taking over his ships or um, taking over the ring and, and, you know, just seeing, like, everyone's reactions to that. How will Cortana react to the Flood infestation that's, I think, taking over the Ark now, right? Last time we saw the Sentinels just trying to contain the Flood. But it's very likely, you know, the the Flood is very pervasive and they will have very likely taken over the Ark. And I wonder how they're going to get to other planets and colonies and start taking over the galaxy, what exactly their objective will be. Honestly, it's probably going to be something Cortana related. But if we saw the flood in this campaign trailer, boy, that would be just fucking awesome. And it would be kind of unexpected, honestly, for for us anyway. I think people that are kind of invested in the news and keeping up with Halo and stuff because we keep hearing about the heroism and wonder and community aspect of this. this is, you know, that, that was kind of like a big thing. And it was such a hopeful trailer. It would be kind of crazy if they kind of put that, you know, turn the tables on that and just kind of made it really dark. And and disturbing and with flood creatures and stuff in fact if they managed to do both at the same time that would be really cool with a full-on campaign trailer honestly I, I i really hope we get like a two-minute trailer that really fleshes out the plot so we know what the hell we're we're, we're getting into right now i don't know how in depth you know in depth they can get with it because next year they're going to be releasing the game very most very likely right and this year is kind of like an empty year it's kind of an awkward year honestly because we've had the teaser i've i've never i've never we've never had this in the past eight years anyway since i've covered halo news we haven't had this weird teaser and then a year gap and then you know where we don't really know when the release date's happening (laughs) except for maybe with the the master chief i think in 2013 right because halo 5 released in 2015 but yeah that was kind of a weird trailer so really the trailer that we got in e3 2018 might be completely different than what we get so anyway moving on to our next comment sarah palmer not being in the game by uh, carson so that's funny. Yes, I feel like Sarah Palmer was one person in Spartan uh, in Spartan Ops. She was just like she, she had a completely different personality. And then and then in this next Halo Five game, they <laughs> she's just, just she was just so chill and mellowed out. And I liked her so much more, but it was like kind of jarring. But anyway, I mean, I don't really like Spartan Palmer, and not in the good way. I mean, three for three, honestly, so far hasn't been that great at making likable villains. In my opinion, I really don't think villains should be genuinely dis- dislike villains like like thanos for example from mcu i mean they're they're the bad guy and you want the good guys to win and you, you kind of see that the bad guys like really fucked up in the head and stuff and yada yada genuinely have fun observing the character and watching and stuff and three for three hasn't really been good at that and so i wonder if they're gonna do well with that in halo infinite if they have you know different writers on board i don't think brian reed's on board anymore which wrote spartan ops and halo 5 i think he quit 
Um, but anyway, yeah, so how how would they deal with Sarah Palmer and all this baggage of characters that they're like half invested in, like Thomas Lasky and stuff and um, all these other characters? I, honestly, I just want them to get rid of all of them and focus on just a couple and go really in depth with them. Because what we got in Halo 5 was just really shallow. It was really spread out between like 15 different characters and it was just it was just kind of boring. You know, we didn't really get to the, the meaty meatiness of it and if they can somehow play off that shallowness in halo 5 um and make it really cool in halo infinite i think that would be that would be really cool that would be like you know bravo to that writer but anyway t dog says ai and forge this is something that keeps coming up holy shit 343 please give us ai give us ai oh my god give us ai <laughs> i want to be able to create my own freaking firefight maps just give us some spawners and a half working npc system that will just kind of react to the environment that we build that would be enough right and I, we know it's not impossible it's not that hard it's not gonna screw up multiplayer networking or porting issues because they've done it in warzone and it works just fine and uh it and and the one thing i want them to do is is limit limit it like there's only five npcs allowed on one map you know that's gonna be really annoying and I, I don't honestly I might be starting to rant here but I don't understand why developers have always done that like they always limit like how much you can use in like a creative mode like forge or something if someone's gonna start la if like the Xbox will start lagging then fine but you know honestly like in reach <laughs> fun, fun throwback um me and my okay I was a kid all right me and my friend we would go into um uh, other people's forge games um only people that we didn't like i think we trolled our friend honestly a couple times doing this but we would we would put a grid in the middle of forge world and then we just turn the physics on turn them on to normal from phased and it would crash it would crash your entire game um fun fact if you're ever wanting to be passive aggressive towards one or full-on aggressive that that's a fun way to do it but really i just wish they would release the boundaries there's no point for boundaries in maps and i don't understand if they're are they embarrassed that we'll see like a part of the map is unfinished i don't understand what, what the aspect of that is we need to turn off boundaries there's no point of that in multiplayer it makes sense of course but i'm talking about forge there is literally no possible good reason that there would be a boundary in forge what what i don't understand why would they do kashi i think says i want arbiter and ritas vadam to be in halo infinite in their classic armor yes uh, another thing i kind of want to rant about is that the arbiter his armor changed from uh, silver to gold and three for three made flashbacks like in the terminals with the arbiters having gold armor and then he has it in halo or halo five guardians he has gold armor which looks cool which kind of you know it's different from like the arbiter armor that we saw in halo three um but i actually think that three for three tried to play that off as the same kind of armor in fact if you look at halo force intro you can see that all the spartans have the same spartan armor that chief had in after the cryo in halo four so i think three for three is was genuinely trying to change things in the lore that Bungie had already done. And um, fuck that. What is the point of that? I really hope they don't do any more of that in Halo Infinite. And we'll see that in the Halo Infinite E3 trailer, right? That it, it, how much are they going to change? In fact, I think that they're going to be going in the opposite direction, honestly, because we see Master Chief's classic armor. Hopefully they bring back the Arbiter's silver armor. Hopefully they just fucking tone down the Spartan 4s and their art style because there's just way too much plastic and rubber going on there it looks stupid i'm glad that they're going back with the black undersuits because it did not look great with the gray slash black i'm glad that they're cleaning up the art style overall and i'm really curious to see how that's going to affect the environments the worlds the characters faces again as we discussed earlier and just all that good stuff you know it's just a lot to look forward to it's not just like oh what's the plot in this new trailer you know there's a lot of things that i'm gonna tear apart i mean i'm seriously going to tear apart that trailer there will literally be nothing left after i have my hands on it all right <laughs> so so subscribe and uh if you have already of course hit that notifications bell but we still have more here um let's see we have alex knight saying the possibility of lock dying the possibility of lock dying i don't think we're gonna see that in the trailer that's way too much of a spoiler um but if lock does die um 
I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. I'd rather just make them. I'd rather just three for three make him a likable character. Really, there's there, it's not that complicated to make a character likable. For example, one one thing that we can kind of relate to Master Chief with is the fact that he was kidnapped at six years old, and that developed a sense of empathy for us uh, for that character from us, and that's what can make a character likable. A character that is abandoned or has a tragic past. Anything that makes us empathize with a character is is really the root of what makes them likable. And so I feel like 3 for 3, if they decide to kill off Locke, then they should play that card or play a couple of them right before he dies. Kind of, this is a bad example, but kind of showing his past uh, or the reason why he became a Spartan, you know, showing um, something terrible happening to uh, him and his family, you know. I think, was his family kill off? I, for I forgot Locke's past, honestly. <laughs> That's how much I care. I haven't done a video on Locke yet, but I've done a character video on Locke at all, actually. Uh, I remember, but but uh, Aiden says, we're about this close to see that trailer this close yes we are aiden we are this close guys we are fucking so close i mean we're gonna see some great juicy halo stuff i'm sure of it i'm sure of it it's gonna be a talk confirmed by chris lee and i've heard me say it a thousand times before it is here baby it's almost here it's not here yet um just super says this is their last chance yikes yeah is it because i i have been covering halo news since 2014 and i actually looked it up the other day people were bitching about halo reach you know i remember i was bitching about halo reach it had armor lock do you guys remember armor lock people said that halo 4 was three for threes was was halo's last chance but to be fair um Halo did lose most of its community <laughs> when Halo 4 released. <laughs> so, I, you know, it was it was their last chance there. Um, I think Halo, Re Halo Reach was really just the beginning of, of Halo's downfall, honestly. But we're really in a cool area because it's starting to grow again. Like, Halo's community is really starting to grow. And, I mean, just look at the Reddit. Uh, looking at, um, you know, for me, from a YouTuber's perspective... Uh, the views on Halo Follower have been up and other Halo YouTubers videos uh, and their videos have been growing very fast and rapidly and uh, it's just becoming a very fruitful place to, to be a part of. I mean, there's all these mods and just just so much to be a part of and it, it's just exciting. It's just exciting, you know. It's a very cool place. Now, will 3 for 3 really honor Halo moving forward? How, you know, what are they going to screw up this time, right? Certainly, I'm going to keep staying in the game because, you know, I love Halo and I want them to see good. And I know 3 for 3 has been learning. So, yes, of course, they're going to make mistakes with Halo Infinite. And who knows? This this new trailer might spawn some anxieties. Um, I'm hyped for it, but I, I don't think we're really going to be able to know for sure what we're going to get ourselves into here when we watch this new trailer. But again, I'm going to tear it apart. Elia said, uh, the new engine. He's excited for the new engine engine that new engine was partly developed during this time between halo 5 and the next halo game here in the past four years and it's called the slip space engine and it is apparently much much better than the blam engine that bungie was using and it's been it's been built upon that but it's been developed in a way that really halo 4 or halo 5 should have already had um, been developed for right so it's very exciting to see that that three for three's kind of got their shit together as far as the engine goes which is essentially everything that creates the game so yeah i'm really excited for that and unsc spartan 115 says the rumor of open world gameplay they're excited for that Yes, of course. Uh, I've, talk I've talked about that so much. There's a lot of evidence for it. So we might see an aspect of that in this trailer. Again, I don't know if we're going to be getting gameplay, but we might see some uh, some campaign elements, some some cinematics that kind of allude to the open worldness. By the way, how the hell is that going to work in lore? And one thing I did say earlier that I, I don't know how many people glossed over, uh, I did say it briefly was that there's uh, an idea I had, which is that they could have a campaign mode, which is a very straight shooter, everything that we know about Halo camp campaign, just a, a point A to point B each mission, you know? Which would be very, you know, it would honor Halo a lot. <clears throat> but then there would be kind of like a separate mode 
kind of like a free roaming mode that would be like a mix of uh, Destiny and uh, Halo campaign style with other players roaming around an open world with new missions and objectives that we could use with our own Spartans. Uh, perhaps the idea around it is that the Infinity is just kind of chilling out on the Zeta Halo and there's all these Spartans running about. So that would be kind of cool. You know, we saw 3 for 3 kind of experiment with the idea of kind of having a um, some interaction with characters in the world, you know, going from player to player, which that works fine. That doesn't break the lore, right? I don't think, right? And I, I think if they if they play their cards right, it could it could turn out to be something really, really cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I can't believe that's it. We went through all the comments, but guys, thank you so much for watching. And let me know down below if you have any ideas because I'm probably gonna make one or two more of these kind of videos because I really just want to talk about E3. I'm excited for E3 and I know you guys are pretty damn excited for E3 and you're just leaving so, so many ideas that I just want to really sit down and discuss for a good half hour or so. So again, let me know everything that's on your mind preferably things that are halo related um not gonna lie i'm not terribly interested in what you had for breakfast but yeah no <laughs> let me know your thoughts about halo and guys i will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching peace